the first period, I was bleeding a lot. I don't know, one and a half months with the period. Well, you only had Hanslus, so crackers are blood. I sometimes have bruises, a lot of them. You operated, so I scraped it back on the polyp back on the nose when I was six years old. Blood flowed down and pretty much blue markings and the nose blood. I was already having a period for a week, and it was weekend, and it was getting worse and worse. They told me, oh, this is normal. It's the beginning, very irregular. At night, when I changed the second time my bed because everything was under the blood, um, I passed out. Uh, my younger son is diagnosed with hemophilia A, uh, severe type. Mina föräldrar sökte naturligtvis vård varje gång och fick ju höra det, ja, men det, det berodde på massa andra saker. För tjejer kunde inte vara sjuka då, förmodligen därför som hon inte ens tittade på det, utan så att... Nu ser till att tänka tomar fattor, antes, durante och depois, det är alldeles incident, alldeles intervenção, nej som säger nivel dentar, nej som säger retirar en sinal. Stå på psykologer som jag kommande mycket. Det är en dag som inte gör diferença och det är en dag som inte affeta. todos os dias, mas é uma coisinha que está aqui dentro, que não me condiciona o dia a dia, mas que se calhar emocionalmente existe ali e ali está ali guardadinho e... Os dias que estamos mais sensíveis, mais uh, tristes e, e pensativos por causa da doença de nos limitar. What is a bleeding disorder? Well, if you cut yourself, you, you bleed, of course. You have a system in your body to stop the bleed. A clot will be formed, and if that's not going well, then you have a bleeding tendency, and uh, this wound won't heal fast, and you have prolonged bleeding. Or maybe it stops a short while, and then it starts bleeding again. And that's not normal, unless it's a very large cut. <laughs> And if there's a coagulation disorder, then it's not going well and you have bleeding problems in daily life. For example, easy bruising, nosebleeds, heavy menstrual bleeding, bleeding in surgery uh, by, by the dentist, for example, after tooth extraction, doesn't stop bleeding or bleeds excessively. Those are symptoms of patients who have a bleeding disorder. It is a common mistake uh, to consider them to affect only male patients. I think it's been an excellent and very well attended roundtable focusing on rare bleeding disorders and women. I was delighted to see that we had five MEPs that came along and contributed very positively to the meeting. For me, the key messages were firstly that there's definitely an unmet need for women with bleeding disorders. There was somewhat of a misconception out there that haemophilia and bleeding disorders affect only men. That is not the case. Classic haemophilia A or haemophilia B in its severe form is almost entirely a male condition. It is rare to find females with severe haemophilia A or haemophilia B. I think the focus has been uh, on men in the past for a number of reasons. Uh, firstly, they present uh, more typically with more dramatic uh, symptoms and indeed problems that are life-threatening. I mean, there's no denying that people with haemophilia uh, present very early on in life with a very classic uh, clinical picture which is easy to identify and furthermore if you don't treat them bluntly put these people die. Women who are carriers of haemophilia really should be effectively referred to as people with mild haemophilia. They're no different from men with mild haemophilia. Men have the disease, men have haemophilia, they have an impressive bleeding tendencies but the women are a carrier of this disease and on average they have 50% activity of the clotting factor. 
uh, which hemophilia patients miss. And this 50% clotting factor is half of normal. Some carriers of hemophilia are unlucky and have even lower values of factor 8 or factor 9. And they do have a bleeding tendency. And also the women who are around 50%. So if you have a clotting factor level below 60% or so, you will experience bleeding problems in daily life. Eu sangue muito pelas gengivas durante a noite. Estou limitada, no fundo, com, embora eu conheça as pessoas, mas uh, não gosto muito de mostrar, porque de manhã uh, a boca está horrível. Tô, muito, muito sangue mesmo. E daí senti-me um pouco... Um pouco... Uh, uh, não me sentir muito à vontade uh, de estar a partilhar com outra pessoa e estar nesta condição. Uh, em casa, no dia-a-dia -dia, também, com, com o meu marido, sim. Uh, tento sair da cama logo quando acordo de manhã, tentar lavar a boca para ele não me ver assim, porque uh, torna-se desagradável. Quando ele aprendeu a ser tão e espolhava a carvar em mim, não sei. Que a sua promena é vremena, nadmorske visine. Ao longo da vida, passei por momentos muito diferentes. Há momentos em que eu estou bem, não tenho hemorragias, e, e tenho que aproveitar ao máximo esses momentos e depois há momentos em que me surge algum problema um problema que se calhar uma pessoa normal se resolveria de uma forma mais simples a minha é sempre tudo mais um bocadinho mais complicado e o último que tive demorou quase um ano a resolver-se que foi ter a ver com um distúrbio hormonal com algumas consequências a nível intestinal e hemorragia It's known that those bleeding disorders that occur as often in women as in men give rise to more problems in women because of the menstruation, so lower quality of life and uh, uh, decreased social participation due to the heavy menstrual bleeding, so maybe you can't go to school or to your work because of your periods, and tired because of constant anemia due to heavy menstrual bleeding, um, and of course the risks in having birth and losing a lot of blood. and then. Yeah, in the worst case, even dying during childbirth. Žene nosioci su generalno apsolutno neprepoznatljive u jednoj priči o hemofiliji. Zašto? Broj žene nosioci je ogroman, vrlo veliki. Broj pacijenata sa hemofilijom pa puta, to nauka kaže, puta četiri je broj nosioca, žena nosioca. 30% tih žena su simptomatski hemofilič, kada to znači da oni imaju neke blage oblike krvarenja. Te žene krvare i imaju problema, At 20 years old, I went to do a um, tooth uh, cleaning. Everything went perfectly well. I went home and at night I started a, a big uh, mouth bleeding. Uh, I had to go to the hospital because the bleed wouldn't stop. I was attended there, they treated me, they sent me home. But then the second night, it happened all over again. And I had to go to hospital again. I couldn't stop the bleeding. I, I was, um, I don't know, maybe four hours uh, bleeding from my mouth. I, I went to the hospital with a, a towel <laughs> on the mouth. Yeah, I had a lot of blood before. Something was just not stemmed. But no one took it for a long time. I worked with my mother as a nurse in a hospital clinic. Jag övertalade sin kollega, helt enkelt en läkare där, att utreda mig. Och sen tog det tills jag var typ nio innan jag fick en diagnos ändå. Så det tog ju väldigt lång tid innan jag fick en diagnos trots att de äntligen fick en läkare som överhuvudtaget ville befatta sig med att inte reda på vad orsaken var. Så det var en ganska lång resa, både mina föräldrar och 
I was diagnosed uh, as having a bleeding disorder around uh, 20 years old. Uh, before that, I had no conscience of it, and I lived a perfectly um, normal life. My life story starts with the diagnosis of my son. Sa dobijanjem dijagnoze moga sina hemofilije sam saznala da mogu biti potencijalni prenosioc ili nosioc gena sa hemofilije. Problem sam saznala sa šest meseci kako je moj mali rastao. Prvo krvarenje, za ustavljanje krvarenja nije bilo kako treba i diagnosticirano je da on ima hemofiliju A a samim tim i da sam ja nosioc gena za hemofiliju. These women are often diagnosed much later than men with bleeding disorders. Many women with bleeding disorders uh, live with a bleeding disorder for many, many years before being diagnosed. Women have significant bleeding points with menorrhagia, uh, with childbirth. So you can have a situation where uh, a woman might have menorrhagia kind of very heavy periods, month after month, kind of an undiagnosed bleeding disorder, may not realize that she has a bleeding disorder because her periods, she'll check with her sisters and her mother and their periods might have been similarly heavy. So they all have an undiagnosed bleeding disorder in, in, in that family. That's not that uncommon. Sister mi je rekla, koja mi je davala rezultate, da bolujem od jedne krvne bolesti koja se ne leči. I meni su se noge ocekle. Kad mi je sestra rekla, ja sam htjela, ja sam znala samo za levokemiju. A kad su me doktorke lepo objasnile o čemu se radi i kako ću da živim, drugačije je bilo i lakše. Until a few years ago, I didn't really care about my condition. Because I felt like it didn't limit me in any of my activities, and um, I kept on uh, living a very um, unworried uh, life. I think it's very much knowledge. I got myself a diagnosis when I was nine years old, and I had a lot of problems before. Både vid operationer men olyckor och sådär och man hade ju konstaterat att jag blödde onormalt mycket men sen gjorde man inget mer för, för det, ja, tjejer kan inte vara börja sjuka och det är så många fortfarande tror att det är även inom vården. I, I didn't have uh, enough uh, information about my condition and the consequences of uh, potential injuries so I lived a very easy life after surgery or after injury or in your periods or for example after delivery so those are risky times in your life when you can experience bleeding problems and it's a underrecognized problem i got married and i i thought of having kids i became more aware of um, my condition and uh, the possible implications that uh, my condition could have. I found out that I could be a, a mother of a, a hemophilic. I didn't knew what hemophilia was, and it didn't really scare me too much because I thought, mm, should he be just like me? No big deal. My first son is an hemophilic, and um, as uh, they told me, uh, the doctors told me he was an hemophilic. I started um, not dealing uh, so good with the, with the, the situation. Uh, I started feeling guilty. Društvo u principu nas ne prepozna kao kategoriju. Mi nemamo svoju šifru bolesti, nemamo svoj broj. Vrlo često imamo primere u Evropi, u zemljama sa vrlo visokim nivom tretmana hemofilije, da žena i dete, žena nosioc i dete imaju iste faktore koagulacije. Dete bude tretirano u hemofilija tretman centru, a žena u običnoj bolnici. Nju kao ženu nosioca ne primaju u hemofilija tretman centar gde je isti, potpuno isti nivo faktore koagulacije. Ima puno problema svugde 
I mi smo tek krenuli, da kažem. Ta priča je tek sad pokrenuta malo. Treba nam malo vremena i ja kažem za jedno dve, tri godine da se okrenemo i da idemo gde smo bili, a gde smo sad. Carriers of hemophilia, maybe one in five thousand or something. But you have more common bleeding disorders, uh, like von Willebrand disease, and one in hundred people have low levels of von Willebrand factor. Not everyone with low levels also has bleeding symptoms, but large proportion of people do, or at least have an increased risk for bleeding. And um, this bleeding disorder affects women as often as men. But women have more problems with these bleeding disorders because of their monthly menstruation and risk of bleeding during pregnancy and delivery. If you have a bleeding disorder, the menstruations are much more heavier and prolonged. Um, so maybe you need to change your pads every hour and bleed into your clots at night. Have problems leaving the toilet because of the bleeding. And it uh, is often also prolonged, so maybe seven days a month or longer. This is a, a, an issue that you don't talk about with your girlfriends. Yeah, we talk about boys, we talk about music and parties. It's also a time of your life when you're quite vulnerable, but uh, you want to be the same as your peers. And um, if you have very heavy menstrual bleeding, it's uh, not something that girls talk about uh, among each other. So you can feel really lonely if you have a bleeding disorder and start to menstruate and it's very heavy. When I started having my period, everything changed. It was not a nice period for me. I was bleeding a lot. To treat this heavy menstruation, maybe you have to start taking birth control pills to control it. And that's something if you're 13 and you have to start already with these type of medication, hormone treatments. My parents brought me to the hospital. They found out that I had lost too much blood and from that moment they gave me the contraceptive pill, I got a blood transfusion, and they really start to stop the bleeding. From that moment, I was 12 years old, so I was young, and um, I was really a girl. I get a lot of hormones. I react not that good on it. So all the emotions in your body, with the hormones changing in your body, changing like you want to be independent, you want to be uh, normal just as everybody uh, but I didn't know what how to handle all the emotions. I was very emotional um, but I always also had like I used the contraceptive pill uh, in the morning I had morning sickness like a pregnant woman because my body was not actually it doesn't fit there. All these things together, with also having the heavy blood loss, was difficult. For four years it was a big struggle. Even the doctors didn't know how to handle that. There was not enough information. Um, and there's also, in my case, a lot of damage inside of my belly because of the bleedings. And for that reason they stopped my period when I was 16. And I'm kind of in a menopause. I couldn't commit with my friends anymore because I had different um, things to think about. Um, I couldn't go out with them because I was too tired. Um, and it really makes me realize how it affects my life. Jag fick också t-piller som behandling för min mens när jag var 14. Och eh, det räckte ju inte med att äta ett p-piller om dagen, för då blödde jag ju i alla fall så jag fick äta två p-piller om dagen och så åt jag tre kvarter i rad, så jag hade minst fyra gånger per år. Men man blir ju ganska mycket påverkad av de här hormonerna så, där, så att man mådde ju inte jättebra. Så att när jag gång i 20-årsåldern så fick jag fram att jag skulle sluta och testa och se hur det kändes så att vara utan. Och så förde jag protokoll också under den här tiden hur mycket jag hade blött och av 365 dagar så blödde jag 256. Mer eller mindre, men 256 dagar på ett år blödde jag. Och det är rätt mycket. En normal mens är ungefär 80, 80 dagar per år. Så man blir ju rätt trött och livet påverkas rätt mycket av det. Det finns ju 
vezes uh, condiciona-me um bocadinho e penso e um, o olhar das pessoas na rua magoa, sim. Outras vezes não, mas também depende, lá está, do nosso estado psicológico. Mas tenta, tentamos ignorar e, e continuar a rua com a cabeça erguida. For me, it's every day there. I see my bruises every day. Bruising occurs uh, especially in primary hemostasis defects such as von Willebrand disease and platelet defects. They occur often and uh, spontaneously. They are not nice. They are painful. People see it, especially during the summer. Of course, that's not very beautiful. Não é usual uma pessoa, especialmente uma mulher, estar na rua com hematomas, ou porque foi acidente, ou porque sofre violência doméstica. That um, psychological uh, can have a large impact. They ask me, what did your boyfriend do to you? Uh, have you been hit? That's not really nice. Sou casada, tenho um marido, uh, respeita-me e, e isso não tem nada a ver. Uh, Mas as pessoas indicam logo isso, já saí com ele e olham para ele e olham para mim. If a woman suspects that she has a bleeding disorder, usually the first port of call is their general practitioner or their general doctor. You would hope that the doctor will refer them to a treatment center for, for uh, hemophilia and bleeding disorders because the, the correct place to get a proper and adequate diagnosis is a hemophilia treatment center. They're often not seen in proper hemophilia centers. We have poor data relating to women uh, with bleeding disorders and the treatment options are quite limited. Svako produženo krvarenje je po meni znak da lekari trebaju da odreaguju. E sad, koliko su naši lekari spremni da se bave nama, to je pitanje. The general practitioners don't know enough about bleeding disorders in women. Iskustva s lekari imam razna, imam lepih, imam ružnih, sve zavisi. Ali ko ima da priča o lepim i ružnim, svim. Primala im transfuzije, infuzije, plazme, krioprecipitate. I bilo je strašno. A neki lekari nisu čuli za tu bolest, pa im onda ja održim predavanje. Neki lekari otaljaju posao, neki su stvarno požrtvovani. Ulazila smo u situaciju da nema dava oca krvi, da nema krija. I krenemo kući da se vratimo, onda nas doktorka zove, nabavila je davaoce krvi i spremi nam krio. To jeste svetlana sa transfuzije radila za sve nas. Vivimo hoje 21 anos, portanto, na altura não se conhecia, a doença era muito desconhecida. Fomos os primeiros o primeiro caso ali a aparecer no hospital, não havia conhecimento, os tratamentos, era tudo um início, era tudo uma construção e cada... Os tratamentos também eram muito demorados e depois associávamos muito aos hemofílicos, tanto que muitas vezes quando íamos, recorríamos a algum médico de especialidade e lhe dizíamos que tínhamos a doença de Von Willebrand, eles perguntavam, tens o quê? E então dizia, é tipo uma hemofilia. Pronto, era, era o nosso recurso para, para nos acalmar e tentarem relacionar com uma doença uh, de sangue. E o tratamento pode ser eficaz? Não muito, com a idade uh, deixa de fazer efeito. E com tantas vezes uh, tomar plaquetas uh, deixa de fazer efeito no corpo. E qualquer, uh, estamos vulneráveis a uh, cirurgias, ou um acidente, por exemplo, se eu tomo tantas vezes, quando for uma, uma situação mais grave, é claro que deixam de fazer efeito e o processamento demora sempre mais tempo. E tento, daí tentam evitar só controlar a anemia e, e continuar assim. Sim. Há um mês. Há um mês. Estás a fazer medicação específica? 
inicialmente comecei com fiz ferro em dominos, mas entretanto a anemia ficou boa, mas com hemorragias que eu tenho tido já desceram novamente. Uh, não, não, não é necessário, não estou na, no, nos parâmetros que é realmente necessário fazer tratamento, mas também um, como não é necessário está uh, tá a 10, não é necessário fazer o tratamento. Controlo com, com alimentação e com o ferro. Uh, é comum estar em estado de anemia, não foi só agora? Não, não, é comum. Eu vivo com a anemia. Se eu com a anemia a 7, eu consigo andar. E estou bem. Comparando com uma pessoa saudável, se estiveres com a anemia a 7, a pessoa já não consegue andar nem abrir os olhos. Eu consigo. Porque sempre fui habituada, o meu corpo está habituado a ter anemia. Hum, eu vou vivendo. Consigo, consigo. Já foi desde pequenino. I think some of the existing treatments at the moment are clearly not being applied properly to women with bleeding disorders. For a start, women with uh, factor VIII deficiency who are carriers of haemophilia, uh, why should they not get DDAVP, which I think is widely underutilized, or for that matter, factor VIII? We heard from a lady today saying that she rece receives fresh frozen plasma, which is, uh, in my view, unforgivable at this, uh, this time. Kod žena nosioca sa svanjenim faktorima koagulacije, one se tretiraju na isti način kao i pacijenti sa blagim oblikom hemofilije. Vrlo često znači, pokazalo se da pacijenti sa blagim oblikom hemofilije, pa zato što nemaju ta neka strašno velika krvarenja, apsolutno zanemaruju ta blaga krvarenja. Međutim, blaga krvarenja podjednako donose oštećenja z globova kao i neka velika krvarenja. Znači, zanemarena krvarenja, sitna krvarenja uz globovima, Takođe dovode do neke vrste validiteta u starijim godinama, či te žene imaju vrlo često problema sa produženim menstruacijama, da ti ne može iz kuće da izađeš tih deset dana, jer je problem, apsolutno problem je živeti. Kako ću tići na poslu, koliko puta moraš tići do toaleta na poslu, osjećaš se neprijetno, onako nije kako... A sve to može se reši sa sprejem za nos, sa najbanalnijim tretmanom, znači ništa veliko, ništa skupo, ništa strašno nepoznato, poznato je sve. Samo te žene treba da budu svesne, da imaju krvarenja i da može da im se pomogne. I da ne moraju tako da žive, da mogu bolje da žive. Man har ju sett det också, vi har frågat personal på ungdomsavtalen om de har träffat någon gång någon tjejer som, som har någon blödningsubbe och nej, säger de flesta. Men studier visar att 25 procent av de som söker sig till ungdomsavtalen är mer rikliga män har ju en underliggande blödningsrubbning. Och då kan man ju inte som vårdpersonal bara ge dem symptomlindring och skicka hem dem. Då måste man ju ha ett ansvar tycker jag att I think there are a number of treatments which are underutilized and I think it's because they're simply not promoted uh, for carriers of haemophilia and women with von Willebrand's disease. Uh, DDAVP, desmopressin, I think is useful in many cases, but it's not widely promoted. Tranexamic acid is also a very useful agent which can control heavy menstrual bleeding in women with uh, bleeding disorders. Um, and I think it's not used as widely as it should be. There are tablets that can help your uh, your clotting factor system to be more efficient, and that's tranexamic acid. That's quite cheap, but you have to take a lot of tablets a day. But it's, uh, this works by inhibiting the breakdown of your blood clots. So um, that's helpful in heavy menstrual bleeding. Many of the novel therapies that are available at the moment undoubtedly I think could be applied to uh, women with bleeding disorders uh, in the future and indeed uh, men as well with some of the rare bleeding disorders because what's interesting about many of the novel therapies that are coming along is that they're not just specific for one particular disorder so in severe haemophilia A we give factor VIII for instance but now we've got such products as uh, inhibitors of tissue factor pathway inhibitor TFPI for instance uh, fitusaran, which is something that uh, down-regulates the synthesis of antithrombin. These basically are, uh, if you like, uh, substances which promote 
the or tilt the balance in the body towards thrombosis and undoubtedly they could be in my view applied to women with bleeding disorders as well but it certainly is the case that at the moment the clinical trials are focusing exclusively uh, on male patients with severe forms of haemophilia. Um, I would hope in the future the clinical trials of these uh, non-replacement therapies could then be applied to uh, women and men actually with the rarer bleeding disorders. I think uh, we will have for the first time therapies which work across the board. So that's one part you can treat the clotting problem and help the clotting system to be more efficient um, and the other part is to treat the heavy menstruation uh, by hormone treatments in the first place and you have yeah in different you can start with the normal birth control pills or with the intrauterine devices that give some hormones and uh, make the menstrual periods less heavy however these treatments will prevent getting pregnant so when you start to treat a woman with heavy menstrual bleeding the first question should be do you want to get pregnant as is at this moment and do you have a wish to get pregnant in the future? A gravidez para mim sempre me deu um bocadinho de medo e criou sempre muita ansiedade. Já desde os meus 17, 18 anos, desde que se começa a falar, hum, pronto, as hormonas começam a gritar mais alto, já com as menstruações eu sentia que não era igual às minhas amigas, não é? passava por períodos muito longos e às vezes quando não eram longos eram intensos, havia, assim, havia uma, um fluxo muito intenso, pronto, eu sentia que, que poderia ter alguns problemas depois na altura de, da gravidez e para hoje não ter, eu achava que não devia ter filhos porque podia mesmo perder a minha vida, então fixei mesmo que não iria ter filhos. Entretanto, tinha uma equipa médica, conforme fui, fui crescendo, por volta dos 20 anos, 18 anos, 20, quando comecei a namorar, eu achava que o meu namorado tinha que se mentalizar que eu não ia ter filhos. E pronto, e o meu namorado, que é o meu atual marido, desdramatizou, disse para não estar a pensar nisso agora, porque a ciência mudava e, e tinha que acreditar que com a evolução, tinha que me sentir mais segura, confiar nos medicamentos, confiar nas equipas médicas, ele era muito positivo. E a médica que me acompanhava no hospital também era, pronto. E disse-me, se quando tu quiseres ter um filho, Joana, não te preocupes, está aqui uma equipa para te apoiar. Essa frase para mim foi a coisa mais importante que eu ouvi. Because of the many bleeds inside of my belly, I'm not sure if I can have kids. And that's a major issue for me, because I really want to have them. So um, everything is under control right now, but if I want to have kill children, I need to stop with the medication. I need to start have a period again, and then we have the same program again. And um, I don't know how to manage that. I'm quite sure my doctors don't know that as well. I've pointed out a couple of times, and they really said to me, F Evelyn, you really need to think about if you want to do that because it's gonna have big impact. I know that I'm not gonna have children on a natural way because of the damage uh, of the bleedings. So it became more an, uh, a mental issue for me, um, but also there I really have in mind that I want to try. I really want to give it a try when I have the right man in my life. <laughs> I didn't find him yet, but... Um, um, That's a motivation for me, and yeah, maybe it's not gonna happen. So it it changes. I feel better. I can have a normal life, but mentally, it's not easy. Det är så att i Sverige så är det ungefär tusen tjejer som har en diagnos och mörker tal på ungefär 50 tusen kvinnor. Så att det är enormt många som finns där ute som inte har har fått den hjälp de, de behöver. We 
within my NMO and uh, now within the EHC, I've been working with the women's group, the women's committee, and uh, we're trying to raise awareness about this uh, issue for women with bleeding disorders. To make uh, people aware that it exists, it's a reality, and it affects women's lives. Vårt att arbete nu på sista åren har bestått mestadels i att försöka informera vården. Då har vi varit ute på olika mässor där vi träffar vårdpersonal. Vi har tagit fram informationsmaterial som vi försöker dela ut och skicka ut. Vi har försökt komma in på ungdomsmottagningar och få träffa personalen där och ha föreläsning kanske hos dem. Olika typer av träffar som, som vården anordnar försöker vi komma in på för att komma åt. Liksom. Jag tror att det är det enda som är något av nyckeln till att att nå de här 50 000. Sen måste vi naturligtvis ha hand om de här 50 000 när de har fått en diagnos. För att det är ju väldigt många som känner att om de får en diagnos i vuxen ålder så visserligen kan det vara en lättnad. Men det är också kanske en liten chock. Eh, om man kan behöva träffa andra. Jag har ju träffat kvinnor som har fått en diagnos som tror att livet är slut. Och så är det ju naturligtvis inte. Vi måste ju kunna visa på att man kan leva ett, ett väldigt bra liv. Ändå, och med rätt, har man fått en diagnos så finns det ju behandlingar och mediciner man kan få och då är det ju lättare också att leva med. Uvek postar ju drogat. Nikko ne može ženu na krvnim bolestima da razume bolje nego druga žena. I realized it was not just me. There are other women with this kind of troubles. Zato je bitno da se obrate u druženju. Zato je bitno da u druženju imaju nekog neku ženu koju mogu da se obrate. Zato je Evropski konzorcijum sad i osnovao komitet za žene. Osnivanje ženske grupe pri udruženju meni puno znači, jer je to mesto gde možemo naći informacije i razmeniti iskustvo da bi u mnogim zemljama žene su apsolutno neprepoznatljive i mnoge zemlje i ne znaju koji broj žena nosioca ima. Znaju, naučno, statistika stoji, ali gde su? Niko ih nema na spisku. For me je to bilo ganske viktigt. Ja tror at mala flesta menneho søker sammenhang der de där de passar in eller där de får ett sammanhang där de träffar andra som är i liten situation och så jag tror att det är nyttigt för alla människor så jag tycker för mig har det varit jättevärdefullt. I really was searching for people with the same story. Att och att man på något sätt blir starkare när man är tillsammans så då kan man ju göra mer också för sin egen del och för andra. Även om vi har det bra i, i Sverige så så eh, får man inte glömma sina systrar liksom i andra övriga delar av världen heller. Så tillsammans tror jag kan göra väldigt mycket och då och så för mig har det varit väldigt betydande att träffa andra i samma situation. Znači dobijemo lakše informacije, dobijemo prave, razmenjujemo iskustva, tako da nađemo se jedna za drugu. Znači, bukvalno je bitno da žena može da se, da ima gde da se obrati i koma, da pita, najbanalniju stvar, lično nešto u vezi udruženja, bilo čega. Znači, mi smo tu za sve žene širom Evrope, za sva pitanja koja postoje i da pokušamo i u njihovim zemljama da promenimo svest. Tenha calma muito recorrer à associação há uns anos atrás, partilhar os meus problemas, ouvir os problemas, sentir-me que não estou sozinha, sentir que, afinal, até há maneiras de se ultrapassar os problemas de uma maneira mais calma, com, com, com recurso a medicamentos que às vezes nós não, não, não conhecemos e desconhecemos e depois saber também que esses problemas foram resolvidos com sucesso. De conhecimento, de, de acalmar, de, de partilhar o que já existe, mas acima de tudo o facto de ser uma doença que já é conhecida, que não, quando nós nascemos não era conhecida via tratamento assim tão específico, agora já há tratamento mais específico, claro que eu espero que haja mais, que, que evolua, eh, tal como tem evoluído eh, para a hemofilia e cada vez, na, no Vanguil, sei que a evolução e a, o investimento é menor, mas o que já existe 
para mim já, já, é, já é bom, porque há tantas doenças que não se conhecem, não é? Há tantas doenças que surgem que os pais não sabem e que, se, que estão a começar. Esta aqui já, já há uma solução, não, já há um tratamento, a pessoa pode ter uma vida normal, a pessoa não tem que... sabe... Claro, é sempre, é sempre ali uma, uma situação que se vai ter que lidar e aprender a lidar, mas vai ser mais fácil aprender porque há muita ajuda e há muitas pessoas aqui para também ajudar e acho que isso é importante. Com os comitês, o Comitê em Portugal das Mulheres, e agora o Comitê Europeu também é uma mais-valia. Acho que é um, Para nós, dá-nos. Ficamos tranquilos e é uma ajuda muito importante. O fato de que os doctores ainda não sabem como aproximar isso e que eles não me deram as coisas que eu preciso, isso me motiva. Acho que a consciência deveria aumentar entre as mulheres themselves and also among physicians that they should think of a possibility of an underlying bleeding disorder in heavy menstrual bleeding. I don't want to have other women um, have the same search as I have. So that is my involvement. That is the reason why I'm fighting for this. We are making strong efforts at this point in time to correct that. Uh, we have a, a very active Women in Bleeding Disorders Committee. Uh, we, had, we, we carried out a Women in Bleeding Disorders survey last year, which got a phenomenal response. Over 700 responses from individual women, uh, in addition to responses from over 20 national member organizations and a large number of hemophilia treatment centers. Independent of having my physical condition, in fundo. Estou limitada a conseguir superar e, e a nível profissional também, tentar uh, uh, não a nível uh, uh, pessoal, mas profissional também. Temos que tentar, não é? Nunca, nunca ficar, uh, nunca morrer na praia, como se costuma dizer. <risos>